the legendary high-speed, undulating and technical Spa-Francorchamps circuit in Belgium for the 2012 Spa Classic. And you'd be hard-pressed to find a more complete program than the Classic Endurance 1 and 2, Trofeo Nastro Rosso, 60s Endurance, Trophy ACL and Group C categories, without forgetting the single-seater Historic Formula 2 and FIA Historic Formula 1 classes. It's an extraordinary list of entries for the second running of the Pitta Auto event. We're very happy. We're really pleased that the owners have shown confidence in us. I think it's important when we organize races each year to come up with a theme that keeps everyone interested. And for this second edition, we have a magnificent theme. On the track, the action is breathtaking. The Spa Classic is becoming one of the must-do vintage car meetings of the season. And this year, tribute is paid to the 1960s and the creation of the Belgian Ecury Francochon team. It's a fine celebration. There are the FF40s, which are very well known. The FF60s are here to pay tribute to Jacques Swatters. And we have a lot of cars from the Ecury Francochon squad and the Belgian national team on display. Older vintage car buffs will recognize that this is a Ferrari. A 275 GTB owned by Philippe Langsweer, who was an associate of the famous Jack Swartis. I spent my time with the Ecury Francochamps. When I turned up in the early 80s, the team wasn't really active anymore, but I was, and I learned from Monsieur Swartis, who shared his racing experience with me. I raced at Le Mans. I did it all, so yes, he shared a lot with me. Toutes les explications sur les courses. Moi, j'ai fait le, le Mans en, en marche avant, en marche arrière, j'ai tout fait, moi, là. Donc, euh, effectivement, il m'en a beaucoup parlé. Philippe and his son are competing in the Trofeo Nastro Rosso. This weekend, he's letting his son get behind the wheel of the Ferrari. I only have one son, so I couldn't say no. My dad still gives me advice before the race. To be able to race in such a prestigious field doesn't happen every day. The start of the race is stressful, but we're here to enjoy ourselves and not damage the car. So, we'll be careful. And being careful is good advice when you realize how much the field is worth. On row one, it's Swiss driver Michael Ehrlich in the Bitsurini 5300 GT and Belgium's Vincent Gay in a 1966 Ferrari 275 GTB. One hour Trofeo Nastro Rosso is underway with a field of pre-1966 Italian GTs and it's clear that this is one of the more glamorous fields of the Spa Classic. It's Dutchman Hans Hugenholtz taking the honours in a 1961 Ferrari 250 GT Drogo, followed by Belgian Eric Mestag in a Bizzarini 5300 GT, with Frenchman Gregory Noble third in a Ferrari 275 GT. Next up is 
Next up, the historic Formula One race, Spain's Joaquin Fulch on pole in a 1981 Brabham BT49C. Jean-Michel Martin in a Fittipaldi F8 shares row one. On row two, Christophe Donsenboer from Belgium and Richard Eyre from England. Race one of the weekend for today's Formula One ancestors. They may be aging, but they remain mightily impressive. One from pole ahead of the two local drivers, Jean-Michel Martin and Christophe Donsenbois. The action is far from over, no time to rest here. Except for taking in this unique atmosphere at the Spa Classic 2012. The sun's shining, the weather's great. How can you ask for more? This weekend at Spa is car collector heaven. And for luxury brands, it's an ideal venue for their merchandise. And there's more perched high in the Uniroyal Tower. Stéphane Sertin from the Gignon Group, a BMW distributor, has invited his guests to share the tremendous view of the circuit. This is a dream come true. It used to be race command when I was a child and now I get to look over the circuit. To welcome our customers here is a dream come true. Pour venir euh, voir les voitures depuis la direction de course. Quand j'étais petit, ben, j'arrivais à passer. Plus âgé, c'était difficile. Donc aujourd'hui, d'accueillir nos clients ici, c'est la réalisation d'un rêve. Quoi. Je pense que c'est ce qui fait la différence. We're not just content in building or selling cars, we try to share our passion. And I think it makes all the difference with a distributor such as us. Now it's the turn of the loud and powerful 60s endurance class to take over for two hours of racing, featuring AC Cobra celebrating their 50th birthday. Four Mustangs, Jaguar E-Types, Lotus 15s and the like. It's an all-Cobra front row with Holland's David Hart in a 1965 AC Cobra starting from pole with Ludovic Caron alongside. The Anglo-American GT Icon is the car to beat in the 60s endurance category and there are no fewer than 60 cars on the track for the two-hour race with a driver change after one hour while some do try to go the distance on their own. And the Cobras didn't disappoint with a sweep of the top four places. Father and daughter team of Alex and Shirley van der Loff take the win ahead of the French Swiss duo of Dominique Guénin and Yvonne Maé and Francis Olivier Casillier. And after the Anglo American stars, it's time for the legendary Italian cars. The FF60 rally made its way to Spa and it's yet another tribute to the Ecury Francochon. With a fine turnout of Ferraris, the Spa Classic takes on the look of a rolling Concorde de Elegance, and the spectators just can't get enough.
One of those participating is Florence Svartes, daughter of the famous Belgian competitor Jacques Svartes, who is being honoured this weekend. Jacques Svartes had a lifelong passion for the automobile and competition. Born in 1948, his career took him to the most famous motor races and circuits in the world, including Le Mans and, of course, Spa francorchamps he co-founded the Ecurie Francochamps team that was for the most part associated with Ferrari. I would drool when he'd take off with a fine-looking car. I dreamt of driving. When I was 18, I thought he'd let me drive a Ferrari, but I had to wait until I was 25. He told me it was too dangerous for an 18-year-old. Would he be proud of you today, we ask, he's, and she says, I hope so. I can tell you that I'm very proud of him. I could never do enough to properly honour him. I think that when we die, we are soon forgotten. But he's with us this weekend. We're speaking a lot about him, and I'll do everything I can for that to continue on. There's now a circuit bridge named after Jack Svartis, and also a stele that's been unveiled during the event. The sculpture has been made by a former body worker of Ecurie Francochamp, Mr. Roberto Bernardi. Now Francochamp and Slaters are linked for the rest of eternity. And now that day one of the Spa Classic has come to an end, the track is taken over by fans of silent vehicles and gravity. You can't miss this, you have to show complete confidence in the driver. You have to be coordinated. Hundred kilometers per hour in a machine like this is certainly intense. The next morning, it was time for the historic Formula Two class to head onto the Spa circuit for its first race of the weekend, and the category is reserved for F2 cars built prior to 1979. Frenchman Philippe Harper took the pole for the F2 race in his 1977 RALT RT1. England's Matthew Watts in a 1977 March also starts from the front row. Formula 2 was created in 47, just a year after F1 came onto the scene. F2 is just above F3 and just below Formula 1. In 1985 the category was replaced by F3000 and then in 2005, GP2 took over as the F1 feeder series. But in 2009, the term Formula 2 returned, although it's not the F1 stepping stone it had been in its glory days. Philip Harper went on to take the win in historic Formula 2 at the wheel of his Ralt. Matthew Watts and Switzerland's Hans Peter joined Harper on the podium. <laughs> Frenchman Patrice Lafarge in his BMW powered Lola starts the CER2 race from pole position and is joined on row one by Belgian Loic Demont in a 1976 Ocella. Scotland's Sandy Watson set the third best time in qualifying and is joined on row two by Switzerland's Dominique Guénard in a 1977 Lola T286. As we've cited two Lolas in this class, now's as good a time as any to evoke a little more about the famous British make, which was founded in 1958. Lola is based in Huntingdon near Cambridge. Lola has a long winning pedigree in everything from American indie style cars to endurance and of course the many F1 feeder series.
After a hotly contested 60-minute race, it's Sandy Watson taking the win ahead of Frenchman Patrice Lafarge and Belgium's Mark Deby. The Tropio Nastro Rosso class is next with a splendid 1960 Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta amongst its ranks. Englishman Kilian Koenig is a proud owner. I'm, I'm very honoured and privileged to be here actually and I'm even more honoured because of the uh, 60th anniversary here at Spa-Francorchamps um, and the owner of the car Clive Joy sadly can't be here this weekend. So um, I'm representing him really and I'm having a great time and it's very, very special driving a, a Francochon car here at Spa this weekend. The car is incredible, so I'm um, very, very lucky, yeah, very lucky. Tell us a little bit about, about the car. Um, well, as I said, it's a Spa Francochon car, it's 1960, um, it uh, entered Le Mans in 1960. So um, it's a, uh, it's, and the car has raced its whole life. It's com competed every year. So um, yeah, yeah. Not too difficult to handle. No, it's very nice actually. It's very nice to drive, um, and uh, it's very flattering actually because it's a very nice car to drive. <laughs> Tell us about the track, about Spa, one of the most incredible uh, track uh, in Europe, maybe in the in the world. Uh, how do you feel there? It is very, very exciting. Yeah, it's it's very fast. Uh, you have to be very smooth to go fast, um, and it's just incredible. And it just goes on and on, and it's just fantastic. It's one of the best circuits in the world, as you say. Killian Koenig starts from fifth place on the grid for race two in the Trofeo Nastro Rosso. On row one, it's Swiss driver Michael Ehrlich and Belgium's Eric Mestag. Quick Italian lesson, Trofeo Nastro Rosso means the red ribbon of victory in Italian. That's been awarded to race winners in Italy for more than 50 years. race for Italian-built GTs, it was local driver Vincent Gay taking the laurels ahead of Germany's Adrian Kraft and Hans Hugenholz from Holland. There are a lot of car clubs here, more than 800 cars in total. A lot of British clubs, three Triumph clubs, and people also turned up with their vehicles from Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg. There were 40 supercars from Club Emotion Auto Prestige and 80 TVRs from TVR Car Club UK and TVR Car Club France. Also represented here at Spa-Francorchamps were Nissans. This car is not here to compete, but to show off its generous forms. This is the new Imperia GP prototype. The Belgian car maker chose the 2012 Spa Classic to show off its latest creation. For the occasion, the Imperia GP went out for a lap around the track in the company of its illustrious ancestor, the 1930 Circa Racing Imperia. Back with the on-track competition with the historic Formula One category. And we're riding on board with Jean-Michel Martin. Joachim Volch got a perfect start and he went on to take his second win of the weekend in his Brabham. Joining Volch on the historic Formula One podium were Jean-Michel Martin and Christophe Donsonbois.
Walsh, Martin and Donsonbois, the top three. Next up is the ACL Group C Trophy for 1980s Circus Sport prototypes that were specifically built for racing in the World Endurance Championship in the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Among them is the Nissan RC90CK of Steve Tandy of the UK. The win went to Gareth Evans in his Porsche 962. Hervé Regu from Belgium was second, ahead of another Englishman, Mickey Donovan, in a Spice 88. Our one-class competitor Jean-Michel Martin is racing on his home circuit. Among his many victories are four triumphs in the 24 hours of Spa. And naturally for Martin, as well as all the Belgian participants, this is a very special weekend. We're racing in our backyard here. I've done a lot of testing here. It's obvious that we are quick. But this is really fantastic because it's still one of the finest tracks in the world with corners that you don't find anywhere else. What makes your Ferrari special, we ask? Well, first off, it's a Ferrari, and I think the lines are magnificent. The Ferrari Daytona is very rare, and I like front engine Ferraris. It has a fantastic Le Mans history. To drive such a legendary car is a huge pleasure for me. The CER1 category has just one race this weekend, and one driver who makes absolutely the most out of the occasion is Scotland's Sandy Watson. with a win, Holland's David Hart finishes runner-up ahead of local driver Mark Devy in a Lola T70. And after the win for Watson, it's Frenchman Philippe Harper taking an easy start to finish win in the historic F2s. Harper won by a comfortable 17 seconds from Matthew Watts, Hans Peter from Switzerland came home in third, 25 seconds behind Harper. and Peter, the top three. <laughs> this second ever edition of the Spa Classic was a memorable weekend full of emotion and motor racing nostalgia and the weather played its role in making the event one to remember for a long time to come. We hope you enjoyed it and rest assured Peter Auto is already working on the 2013 edition.